begin to revelate the word. So he explained the word to them. It's not like he just was parable all of the time, but he was parable around those who really didn't want it. And so I may say something today around here, you'd be like, now what in the world is she talking about? All I can tell you is become a believer today. Become a believer today. Uh, 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 because the mistress of kingdom has been given to us. And, and God don't want us broken, and disgusted. Now you can stay broken, and disgusted, this kingdom talk right here. Or you can stand to your feet and declare that today is the last day that I'm going to be broke. I, I just, I just broke some of the kingdom. And some of you broke people just speaking. I said, let me tell your neighbor, said, we about to go somewhere. So one man just got a shovel. So they go to the place in which they're going to build their house. They're right across the street from each other. And so the man that got the wood, the nails, and the hammer, he began to lay his foundation and build his house. The man across the street with the shovel, he's just digging a hole in the ground. I I'm going to say this again. The man that got the hammer, the nails, guess what he did? He started building his house. He laid his foundation. He started building his house. The man across the street, all he did was dig a ditch. And so the next day, the man is still building his house. Weeks later, the man is still building his house across the street. He's putting up a frame. The man that's across the street with the shovel, he's still doing what? Digging a ditch. He's still digging a ditch. The man across the street, he puts the frame up. And now he's ready to put the roof on his house. The man across the street, what is he doing? He's just digging a ditch. He's down deep in the ditch. Well, one day his wife comes to see the house. And she says, I'm not coming back to see this anymore because all you've been doing over the last few months is digging a ditch. She said, the people across the street is ready to have a housewarming party. And you still doing what? You just digging a ditch. She said, I'm about to leave and I'm not coming back. All of a sudden, the man with the shovel hit some hard in the ground. Boom. He said, honey, don't leave. Don't leave. What I've been digging for, I just hit it. Don't leave. He said, now I can build the foundation for our house. I I'm trying to help somebody. See, 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 see. The man across the street was having a housewoman. Well, while the man with the shovel, all he did was dig a ditch. See, see, he was trying to dig a ditch deep enough. See, see, some of us are shallow people. But God says it's time to dig a, deep, a ditch deep enough. And, and, and so he dug that, that ditch so, so deep. See, see, don't worry about the church what they're doing down the street. Because God said, you can't build my church on no conferences, on no prayer practices. I, I, I'm in the hell about to go somewhere to talk next with me today. Don't, don't touch me today. Listen. So, so listen. On the first night that the man with the shovel gets an opportunity to stay in his new house he built, a storm broke out. The wife all upset cried. Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say 
the son of man is. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? In other words, he said, what the community is saying about me don't matter. I want to know what you are saying about me. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. He said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, son, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, wait, 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 wait. He said, and I tell you that you are Tammy, and he said, and on this rock, I will be a bread of life Christian ministry, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Wait, 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 wait. He said, wait, wait, wait. He said, Peter, listen. I know who you are. You used to fight against me. He said, yeah, you walked on the water, but you lost focus. He said, that's why I'm calling you your natural name, Peter. He said, but even on who you are, he said, I'm going to establish something that the gates of hell cannot come against it. What are the gates? The gates happen to be a place where we make decisions, where the practice meet, where the Greek cry out. But listen to this. There are also gates where the enemy show up, where the enemy conspire, where the enemy try to come against you. And God said, no matter who tries to come against you, no matter who tries to stop you, God said, pray the life. Check this out. I said, now God, you say the gates of hell is not going to prevail against bread of life. God said, think about it this way, Ruth Ann. He said, you ever heard of a Peterbilt truck? Who heard of a Peterbilt truck before? And, and, and if you think about a Peterbilt truck, you know how it's made. If you look at the commercial, it says, built to last. It's got the chrome on it. You know, it's real pretty, real nice, real strong, real innovative technology. And listen, if you see the commercial, they always have that stone in it. Knock it down and it says, built to last. And God said, the reason why the gates of hell, and this is for the body of Christ, 